What is Christmas all about? Perhaps we should begin with what it's not about. It all starts with the name. It's not the quote-unquote holiday season. I mean, it is a holiday season. But if it's not the Christmas holiday season, what is it? It certainly isn't Xmas. I understand that the X stands for Christ in Greek, forming a nifty little abbreviation to the word. But was Christmas really too long to write out? When people say, Merry Xmas, it certainly doesn't have the same ring to me. What's next? Followers of Christ will be known as Exians? Some want to call it winter break, and I thank you for being proponents of us hard-working folks getting a break at the end of the year. But during my winter break, I'll be celebrating Christmas. It's not about the tree that we set up in our living rooms and put a star on top of. I'm not here to bash the idea of setting up trees, whether real or fake. The lights are pretty cool and all, but it simply is not about them. It certainly isn't about Santa Claus. Who came up with the idea of an obese man climbing down our chimneys in the middle of the night, not to steal stuff, but to leave things under our tree? It seems a little scary if you ask me, and then if an obese man climbs down my chimney in the middle of the night, he's liable to be shot before I even identify him. Assuming that he were to show up and eat the five pounds of cookies that we left out for him, he might never make it back out again. Saint Nick may be the jolly old guy of our imagination, but he's no more real than the Easter Bunny, and he's just another distraction from the Christ and Christmas. So needless to say, this season is definitely not about him. Not surprisingly, it's not about Santa's reindeer either. Sure, the names roll right off. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Fixin, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. Rudolph, with his red nose. But reindeer don't fly, and Christmas has nothing to do with them. It's not about the multitudes of tiny elves that spend the year slaving away, making toys for all the good little girls and good little boys. Personally, if I were to walk into such a facility, I might get the wrong idea and think that they were violating child labor laws. And the thought of a bunch of short people forced into labor wouldn't have flown two centuries ago, let alone today. It's not about eggnog, mistletoe, or holly. Someone came up with the bright idea that we should spike our eggnog, which isn't all bad. They think we should kiss under parasitic moss? I like kissing, but I don't need to wait to do it under a piece of vegetation. And deck our halls with bells of holly? What on earth does that mean, anyway? None of these things have anything to do with the real meaning of Christmas. It's not about chestnuts roasting on an open fire or Jack Frost nipping at my nose. Personally, I've never roasted anything but marshmallows over an open fire and most of the time they come out looking like charcoal briquettes by the time I'm done with them. And Jack Frost? He sounds more like a glorified frostbite than anything worth celebrating. Christmas certainly isn't about them. It's not about the prettiest yard filled with glistening lights. Sure, the good old C9 bulb can really get the electric meter running, and the electric company might send out holiday cards to the winner of your block's decoration contest. But Christmas has nothing to do with them. It's not about the carolers that show up at your doorsteps. Personally, I can't sing and I can't dance, and if I show up to sing at someone's doorstep, they're liable to call the police. It's not about the presents that we open on the glorious holiday morning. I've never quite understood the purpose of that beyond the fact that we happen to love stuff, so why not get some? After all, who needs another gaudy necktie or a pair of wool socks? They might stave off old Jack Frost, but they have nothing to do with the real meaning of Christmas. Frosty the Snowman, get out of town. I like playing in the snow and building snowmen. 
but I'm certainly not going to put a nice silk hat on one's head should I actually own a nice silk hat. And if I did put one on a snowman's head and he came to life, I'm not sticking around to chat. I'm getting the heck out of Dodge. Needless to say, Christmas has nothing to do with him. So again I ask, what is the meaning of Christmas? It helps to look at the word itself. The word Christmas is divided into two root words, Christ and Moss. Moss originates from the Latin word Mass, and it dates back to the early Roman Catholic Church. Although many are familiar with the word Mass, few understand its true meaning. Originally, Catholic Mass was a public celebration of the Eucharist. The word Eucharist finds its origins in the Greek language. Literally interpreted, it means Thanksgiving. So the root word Mass means give thanks. Christ too comes from Greek origins. Simply stated, it means the Anointed One. So when we say Christmas, what we are really saying is give thanks for the Anointed One. Who is this Anointed One for which we give thanks? Jesus, or Yeshua in Hebrew, is the Anointed One. While many use the name Jesus Christ as though it were the first and last names to describe Jesus, both words have their own significant meanings. Yeshua is a variation of Yeshua, or Joshua in English, which interpreted means to deliver, save, or rescue. If we were to interpret Christ Jesus literally, we would be saying, the Anointed One who saves us. It's true. He is the Anointed One who delivered us from the consequences of sin, saved us from our deserved fate, and rescued us from our inability to abide by the law. Jesus, the only Son of God, left his throne in heaven to be born to a lower class family. He left his seat in glory to be born in a barn and placed in a food trough meant for animals. He made a great sacrifice just by showing up. I don't know about you, but for me, this sounds like something worth celebrating. This is what we celebrate, the meaning of the season. The only Son of God gave up everything to come to this planet and be a servant to all. Does that make you feel merry? So this Christmas, I humbly suggest that as you sit roasting chestnuts by the open fire, drinking eggnog with brandy, that you remember the real reason that we can be merry. As you place 20 strings of C9 bulbs and Santa's sleigh in your yard, remember the one worthy of celebrating. As you kiss beneath the mistletoe and deck your halls with bells of holly, don't forget to worship the one who came to rescue us. As you meticulously decorate the best tree your local retailer had to offer and place your star on top of it, don't forget the star that shone brightly in the sky, marking the place of the Anointed One. His name is Jesus. He is the reason for this season. God bless you, and Merry Christmas.